Joanne from Magpie's Cottage. I'm Amy. Nice to see you back. Happy Saturday. Yep, beautiful outside. It's gorgeous. Yep, that cold weather snap's gone, finally. It's melting. Yeah. We got half a yard. Like every day I get three more inches from the house. You know, it <laughs> starts from the house and works its way out. I'm still shocked at how high that wall is on the edge of the driveway. Oh, <laughs> Because yeah. with the our house, the way it faces, that wall is always mm -hmm. the last to melt because it just doesn't get direct sun. Yeah. So, yeah, that wall is really high yet. But everything else is melting just fine. Yeah. At the end of my driveway, it's still at least neck high for the pile from the driveway. Wow. So, that'll take a while. Ah. Yeah. Okay. It just doesn't melt fast enough, you know? Yeah. We're going to flip the cal calendar page mm -hmm. to March on Monday. And darn it all, we want that snow gone. Yeah. Right. Right. So, yeah. Winter's uh, done. I'm done. You know, and, and, and I'm thinking, starting already thinking about, like, warm weather knits, too. Oh, yeah, I was, too. I was going to ask you if I could borrow your Alina top to have it show in the, in the store. Oh, yeah, sure. It's a warm weather knit. Yeah. Yeah, I got to find it. Yeah, bring <laughs> it next time. I will bring it. Yeah, yeah. you can put that on a, on a, on a, on a rack and yeah. whatever. Yeah, I got an empty rack right behind me. There you go. So, yep. Um, yeah, so. I would love that would be fine. Okay. Might even be a little big on me. Okay. <laughs> and so maybe I can't wear it. <laughs> oh, those kind of things I think you can. Because I think you got to wear the tank top tight underneath. And then yeah, I do. The, I do wear the, a cami underneath. The outside one can be a little baggy. Yeah, I do. And actually, I do because, um, you know what, some of that lace. I knit it per pattern, but I might have knit less of it if I was mm. going to knit it again. Okay. Yeah, okay. just because I'm an old lady. Yeah. Yep. What are you wearing today? Oh, my newest favorite cowl. Okay. Yes. That one? This is called Susanna. S U S A N N A H by Heather Boos. B O O S. Okay. And pattern is available on Ravelry. Mm -hmm. And that's where I got it off of. Anyways, and it is a cowl that you knit flat. Okay, but and then it's you seam got it in yeah, the back. you seam it. But you know what? The seaming was so easy because you really are just going through the the pearl bumps, on, uh -huh. on, on, you know, for your mattress stitch up the backside. Okay, and and it so and it's got short rows, and you so the black was a, did okay. a series of short rows to get the wobbles, and then this the the colors are just straight stripes. Oh, okay. So and with this pattern, there's two versions: one where you do. The short rows in the uh -huh. main color, and one where you do some short rows with the contrast colors. Okay. Two versions. I don't know if I I, I had this thing I mm -hmm. might just try for kicks and giggles. I might knit the um, uh, the other version. Mm -hmm. You know the version two. This is version one. Wh version two would probably be a lot like my falling leaves. I, you know what? That's what this it yeah. knit up very much like that. Yeah. You know with these short rows. Okay. Um and. I, you know, it was a quick knit. I, I think uh -huh. I did it over a couple of days. I started it mid-February, and, um, you know, you'd think these short rows would take a while. Mm -hmm. They don't. Right. Yeah, when it's in garter, you don't have to pick up the wraps. And then Actually, I did so on these. You did? I okay. did. I did pick up the wraps. I don't usually if it's garter. You you know, they say you don't have to, but I, I just was happier doing it. Okay. So, yeah, if you think you're going to have holes, then you That's what my fear was. And okay. I don't have any holes. It, okay. You know, tightened up really nice. So, uh -huh. yeah, I'm very happy with it. Good, I knit good. this in um, Leading Men um, uh -huh. because it was a Leading Men knit-along. Mm. On, on their um, Ravelry group, they, they mm -hmm. post a knit-along every now and then. And I do them mm -hmm. once in a while. Just, sure. And I like this one. So yeah. this is um, Leading Men, Darkest Night, um, Dirty Truce, Street Art. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Just three colors. Just the three colors. Three and it was a mini skein of the contrast. Okay. Yeah, and I didn't even, you know, it was like uh, three-fourths of the full skein of fingering and two minis. Okay. And so, that you know, that was nice. I mean, mm -hmm. you could do this with leftovers. You could, you know, whatever. It took, mm -hmm. it, it should, I think it was, let's see, their mini skeins are 20 grams and so 80, 80 mm -hmm. yards, roughly, is that it? Yeah, 
it, it gives you between 80 and 90 out of the 20 grams. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that did, and I didn't use the whole thing either. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so, yeah. So I, I'm kind of excited. Yeah. My FO nice. of the week. Yep. I have no FOs because I'm not knitting. But, but I'm wearing, this is um, my bastardized version of the U. <laughs> I went up four needle sizes and went down four pattern sizes so I could do it in worsted instead of fingering or sport. Is it the pattern I think you can do either fingering or sport? Yeah. But um, yeah, so I did this in worsted because I just love this yoke. I do I too. Mean, I love the mine. Neckline, I like. I really like the way it fits. I used um, Cantata from Cascade Yarns, which is like a cotton. If you look at it, it's like a cotton cage with merino blown in. So it, the merino is super wash. So this could totally wash and dry. What is the percent workout to? My label's ripped. Oops. Careful. 70% cotton, 30% merino. So yeah, I think I used about five of them maybe. Five yeah, or six. I think that would be about right. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing. Cool. Yeah. So what is, oh, should we show this quick since it's in front of us? Yes, we have new yarn. Yeah. It is a <clears throat> cotton linen blend, 60-40 cotton linen. It's called Zooey. And it is awesome summer top knitting. And so we've got this gorgeous teal. I love this color. Yeah. Okay, so, and then I, we have this purple. Now purple is not, is in not my color palette. I wouldn't wear purple, uh -huh. but I love the purple. It's gorgeous. Uh huh. Absolutely gorgeous. And then for the neutral level, lovers, this is beautiful. Mm hmm And fuchsia. So I don't know, in the comments. Which one? <laughs> it's gonna be a, a, a summer tea. I just don't know which one yet. Mm -hmm. I, I I was looking at my um, uh, queue playing around yesterday because I, I I'm ready to knit a summer tea. Oh okay. I'm ready to do one. So mm -hmm. I'll get my um, cardigan steaked and get that finished. I got a ba uh, baby gift I'm finishing mm -hmm. up. I'll show you in a minute and yeah. Then I'm ready for a summer tea. Okay. Any of them like the like the novelty where you're going sideways? Is that in there? No, I'm not going to do that. I, 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 I did I did okay. one and I liked I liked knitting it. It was fun. Uh -huh. um, and I actually have a version, um, a long sleeve version in my queue. I just uh -huh. haven't gotten around to knitting it yet. I, I'm going to. Okay. I'd highly recommend the Night Sky by Isabel Kramer. Actually, it wasn't. Or Morning Sky. That's the one it was. It was Morning Sky. That's in your queue? Yeah. yeah. That's what I was looking at. And this is the yarn uh -huh. that she used. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Because that's what I used that's that what, other That's where this for. is all started. That's why this is all clicking. Yeah. Because yeah, it was Morning Sky. I love that one. I wear that one a lot in the summer. And so, yeah. yeah. And I, what was, what happened was, as I was looking through my queue thinking about what summer tea I wanted to do. And I came across Morning Sky, and I, I looked at it, and oh my gosh, Zooey. And I thought, that's that new mm -hmm. yarn you just got in. Yep, I love it. So, it's kind of swingy, like A-line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. So um, this does a little crunchy, not terrible. It feels but crunchy, but that's the it linen. It will get soft as soon as you wash it. Yeah. And the more you wash it, the softer it gets. Definitely. But yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking, I, I just have to decide. That's the one I was thinking of doing. Mm -hmm. well, um, and so I think, I, I, I'm leaning towards this. I haven't knit this in a really long time and I mm -hmm. love this color. Yeah. I can wear it. But then yeah. I'm thinking, oh, this is so pretty, so classy. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. So now I'm struggling. Yeah. Don't know which. which one? They're all beautiful. Yeah, they are. So for for knitting content, it's all you. Gonna okay. start with FOs or? Um, I don't, well, this is it. Oh, that is your FO, okay. That's my FO of the week. This is my okay. work in progress. So um, I put this ruffle on. I haven't blocked this yet. 
I knit okay. a baby dress. A friend of mine is uh, due, and I wanted to knit something baby. But, you know, it's an April baby. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking spring. Yeah. And this baby lives in a warmer climate. Mm -hmm. So by April, they're wearing summery oh, things, yeah, you know, sure. where this baby lives. So I knit this dress. There. Yeah. Um, and this, it's just adorable. So this is like a, a three-month size. It's tiny. And yeah. then I knit the ruffle. Um, nah, I could maybe, maybe. I maybe made it too roughly. But some of that will block out. This isn't sure. blocked yet. But um, at any rate, so then I just put the ruffle on the bottom. Very pretty. Isn't that adorable? Yeah, so that's an FO. Yeah, it is. Well, yeah, I guess it is. I don't consider it finished yet because... Because it's not blocked. Because it's not blocked and the hat's still on the needles. I'll consider okay. it an FO when the hat is done. Okay. Now, this is really weird. Okay, I noticed this last night. I'm looking at my color sequence. I started with a pinhole cast on or a circular uh -huh. cast on and I'm going down. And then I'm going to mimic this ruffle on here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I might make it a smidge narrow or maybe a row or two less. Yeah. Um, but basically, so I did my increasing every other row. I'm making this up. All right. Uh -huh. And um, so now I'm knitting straight and I'm going to knit straight for, oh, a couple inches yet. I'm not ready for the ruffle, but, and then I'll mimic that ruffle. But look at the yarn. Okay. In the stripe sequence, it goes purple and, and it, this was the same dye lot. It's like it's upside down. Oh, that happens all the time that you pull from the opposite end. Because, you know... Did I... But, but I went from the inside... On both of them? On both of them. That happens, though, because you know that, that blossom yarn I have? Yeah. And that one you have to knit so that the green comes first and then the flower color. And you never know until you pull it out if you have to start from the inside or the outside because they flip-flop. I don't know how they wind them, but that happens. Bizarre. I yeah. was thinking if I went from the inside on both balls, my uh -huh. yarn should theoretically be the same. Yeah. My color sequence is the opposite on the hat. Uh -huh. Now, in the end, it's going to be fine. You're never going to see that. Only yeah. I was just playing with it. And what's more, because the color, the hat is knit... I'm knitting it up, uh -huh. okay? When you turn the hat the right way, it ends up actually being perfect. Uh-uh. Oh, darn no. it. I thought I had it figured out. Well, it's at any rate, I, it'll be fine, and nobody's going to notice this. But it was just bizarre. Yeah. So I guess that what I'm using, I found this up at a, a, a knit shop up in the UP when we were up there. Mm -hmm. And it's called, it's by Cascade. It's called Longwood Stripe. And um, it's it's sport weight, self striping. Can't I mean super wash? What the heck? Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect kid yarn. Mm -hmm. And it says right on the label, put it in the dryer. So okay, um, good. Yeah. So, I mean, it's soft. It's mm -hmm. nice. I, I'm I'm liking the way it's knitting up. It has a good can mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. So very nice. Uh, okay. So that's my other F bowl almost. For the week so that's what i've been working okay. on all right and that's just my steak sweater okay i think i showed it it's done okay yep you did i, I did so. have a little something with my hand and it is feeling better it's not better yet not all the way i mean i still have it, it locks up that my finger will lock down and stuff but it's getting better and one thing i found i can do a little bit of is with I don't have it here. It must be back there. Those ergonomic um, hooks from Addy with the shapely handles, I can crochet a little bit. So I started, a, or I worked on a little scarf here. This is with another new yarn that's going to be coming in. Oh. Um, it's called Marmel um, from Ella Ray. It's kind of a thick, thin cotton. That would be so fun. So this for was a baby my thing. sample skein, and uh, yeah, I'm just crocheting up a little scarf just to show what it works up like. It's got stripes, but not real definite stripes, kind of fading stripes. Kind of crazy. So, yeah, I like it. Yeah, this is probably the craziest of the colors. You know, other ones are just stripes of different blues okay. or whatever. 
But yeah, those will be coming soon. So I'm working on that. So I do have a little something, but I mean, I probably did this much in the yeah. three weeks. Yeah. So yeah, today is our steaking day. So I am only going to be steaking my samples. Let me see. I got them in here. I'll tell you again a little bit about what I'm going to do. So um, I guess I must have put these bumps so I could. Oh, no, that's the bumps were for my needle size. Yeah. Sorry. Um, what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to take a needle and thread or needle and yarn like orange or black yarn or something. And first of all, put a line up the center of where I want the steaking to be. Yeah, you should mark it. And then on the stitch to the, each side of that, I'm gonna run a line of zigzag stitches, small zigzags. The reason I'm doing zigzag, not stretch, is because then it'll let it- On the machine or by on hand? On the machine. It'll let it stretch a little bit. Okay. And then I'm gonna cut it and it'll be ready for a button band. So then on the second sample, I have two of these, one, one for size five and one for size six needles. On the second one, I'll do the same thing with marking the center. And then I'm gonna crochet on each edge on each side of that. And then I'll cut up the center of it. And then that'll be that one. Now, if, if I were using super wash yarn, I would do both those techniques on my sweater. I'm gonna just do one on each um, to decide which I like better, and that's what I'll do on the sweater when I get around to knitting it, when I can knit again. Um, so since I'm using superwash yarn, the pattern I've got says if you're using superwash, use a machine steak. Okay. A sewing machine technique. It you says uh -huh. use a sewing machine technique. Okay. Yeah, the steak so. could unravel easier, is what I've seen and heard. Okay. And I'd probably do both methods just, you know, for peace of mind. I even heard, like, a uh, fat squirrel says so she does machine, but she does two lines of it. Two of lines. zigzag? Yeah. And you just do a small zigzag, just so it gives it a little flexibility. You don't Through want the, the first stitch over. Yeah. Okay, well, so, I'm gonna yeah. figure it out today. Yep, we're gonna be working on that today. Um, I'll sew with opposite thread. If I remember, I will film us, or at least take pictures of us doing that and put it at the end of this video. Oh, cool. Yeah, yep, so uh, hopefully we'll get that all done. That all should right. be fun. Okay. So. This is a short episode because I'm not knitting. That's sad. But it if it's is. getting better, that's a yeah. good thing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it doesn't hurt as much. I mean, it's still, do like right there, I just did it. I hit the spot. There's a spot. The, the main pain is here. It's coming from this finger. And I don't know. No, I don't know. I should go see the doctor, I know. You should. Because At this point in time, it's not better. It, this has been three weeks. Yeah. Okay. So People who knit cannot be laid up for three weeks. No, no. But I will listen to my hand and put off knitting until it's better. Well, that's true. But I'm thinking that... I'm thinking there's more to it than just, you uh -huh. know, some tendonitis because you over-knit over Christmas. Because... And, and uh -huh. the reason I say that is because, yes, I know how much knitting you were doing. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's true. And I know that you were working your tail off to get all these projects done. But mm -hmm. the real pain in that you really started grumbling about this pain in your finger mm -hmm. didn't start until almost two weeks after you finished the Christmas knitting. Right. But I was still going in January. Uh, Not like you were. There was... The, it, it, it seemed to me that... When you first told me about how much pain you were in and with your with this finger, I, I thought, but you slowed down your knitting before this pain. Mm -hmm. I, I don't that's know what, if that's I really what did. Because I was head. making sweaters at home. 
plus well, doing okay. small stuff here. And I had a finished object every week. You did? Yes. <laughs> so making sweaters at home, small stuff here, something finished every week. So I was still knitting a bunch. Now I am not. I cranked a tube, I crocheted a little bit. Um, I'm sewing a okay. lot. I'm dyeing a lot. Oh, those roses, not all roses are red. Mini kits flying off the shelves. I'm gonna go home and make a whole bunch more today and tomorrow. Oh my gosh. Yeah, there's none in the what store right What are you gonna right do now. for March? March starts Monday. You need oh, a new color. Oh, I need a new color. I'm gonna do In Like a Lion. And it's going to be all stormy with a tan in it. So all kinds of gray, different shades of gray, and then a tan little bit. Wow. Yeah. That's my plan. We'll see how it works out. I haven't made a sample yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes you make samples and, and they, they don't, don't work. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well. Yeah, if that tan gets too dark with the grays in there or something. I might not like it, but that's my goal. That's what I'm gonna try in like a lion. But yeah, I think I gotta make up some more of those sets first okay. tomorrow, today and tomorrow because there's none left on the shelf. Oh. I mean, I still have winter blues ones left. I think I got four of them up there, but I don't have any of the other ones. And I wow. quick dyed some extras. Well, you got one on set of Wednesday minis night. down there. Well, I think I'm missing one color in that set. Oh, so it's a five color set instead of It's a six? five. It's a five. No, five is how I'm selling them. Oh, so it's a four? I think there's only four in that bag. There is a gorgeous shawl out there that calls for four minis. Oh. It's called Midwestern Afternoon, and I plan on knitting it. That's the only reason I know that. Ah, okay. <laughs> it's like, it's a Lisa Ross pattern mm -hmm. that um, I really want to knit. I have uh, mm -hmm. a kit that I bought somewhere. Um, to knit it. Oh, I was at Stitches, and mm. it was these, and it's all done in with a with Stellina in the yarn, so it's sparkly, oh. and it's called Midwestern Afternoon, and but then mm -hmm. I'm thinking, there's four minis in there, and I'm thinking about all the wonderful colors that I have mini skeins of, mm -hmm. and then I'm thinking, oh, I could do something really crazy, mm -hmm. and you know, so the possibilities are endless with this shawl. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a set of four minis would be just fine for this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, I think that for like a summer weight, take those four minis because they're such mm -hmm. pretty spring kind yeah. of colors, yep. and then put them with an ivory. Mm -hmm. I think that the way this mm -hmm. shawl stripes, I think that would be an absolutely gorgeous shawl. Yeah. So and and if a person needed a wrap to like to wear out in the evening, because they're going mm -hmm. to a wedding in California. Ah. When the weather gets, um, when the sun goes down, it gets a little chilly at night. Sure. So we'll be outside because it is an outdoor wedding. I'm thinking whenever I get around to finding a dress for said wedding in California, mm -hmm. I need to um, knit myself something to wear w with it. Mm -hmm. Although I do have my absolutely gorgeous, um, uh, the one we did with all the different stitch patterns. A um, cast of pink one? No, 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 no. It was, a, it was we did a class. Um, Knit Pearl Hunter. Oh, that building with lace. Yes, building with lace. Thank you. Yeah, that was gorgeous. Yeah, so I have that. It's a little on the long side because mm -hmm. I'm so darn short. But um, so I have that, and that was always going to be something for a very special occasion. Sure. Um, and, uh, but I don't know what I'm wearing to said wedding. So, uh -huh. yeah, that's gotta a problem. Find your dress I got to find a dress. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to say. I, well, and the thing is, is that, okay, I know Ashley's mom's not going to dress real fancy because she's not that kind of person. Mm -hmm. She will proud, she's very tall, very willowy, and um, I think that she would look absolutely gorgeous in this. She wants to wear like a, 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 a jacket and pants kind of, mm -hmm. and you know, one of these very flowy kind of things. And mm -hmm. she would look absolutely gorgeous, and she looks phenomenal in black. And I honestly think she's going to wear this black, like, pantsuit. Maybe really with a beaded wearing jacket. black to a wedding? That's yeah. not a no-no? They don't have any rules out in California. Okay. Things. So I think that's what she's going to wear because Ashley, Ashley told me that she hadn't bought anything yet. So uh -huh. Ashley says, you go find a dress that you like and just have fun wearing it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I know what I want. 
I just mm -hmm. have to shop for said thing. Yeah. So, um, but I want something A-line, and I want it, um, I want a floral print. Oh, okay. So, oddly <laughs> enough, the cut and the style of the dress that I bought, and I wore to a wedding a couple summers ago, uh -huh. and then I wore the same dress <laughs> to my mother's funeral in July. Oh. It's a very, it's gorgeous navy blue color block. Uh -huh. um, I love this dress, I love the fit of it, I love the cut of it, I love everything about this dress. It is literally probably one of the most famous, favorite dresses I've ever worn. Uh -huh. But I cannot wear the same, and it's a summer dress, I mean, uh -huh. you know, and but I cannot wear the same dress to my mother's funeral and then turn around and wear it to my no, son's wedding. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that I, I love the dress and I think the dress yeah. would fit and it would be ac absolutely lovely. And uh -huh. then, and because it's um, navy blue and white and black with like color blocking on the, on the skirt, um, I could knit any number of gorgeous um, wraps. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jen Weissman and like, Knitting, knitting, um, knitting in the stacks or something. That's a a, a long rectangular, but it's got uh -huh. like triangles on the end. It, it comes to a point, but it's okay. a long, narrow rectangle that comes to a point. She's got a couple patterns like that, and the the re, they're they're very textury. Um, lots of you know um, mm -hmm. texture patterns to them. Um, yeah, a castle pink a ramp would you know long and narrow. Um, and, and and so yeah, there's any number of possibilities. Mm -hmm. Just can't wear that dress. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem was is that due to my COVID nineteen pounds, um, <laughs> there was no. Yeah. Um, I didn't have any other you know more summery smaller mm -hmm. sized things to wear in my closet, so that was it. Okay. So yeah, it's a problem. Yeah. At any rate. So. So okay. I'll find when I find the dress, then I will knit the wrap. Right, or decide if you're going to do building with lace. Well, I probably won't. Okay. I do like my building with lace. I mean, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous mm -hmm. piece, but it's I think for what I want, it's too long. Okay. And I'm and it's only because I'm too short. Mm -hmm. Somebody much taller than I, mm -hmm. that would just wrap and lay it just fine. But okay. being so short, it ain't not going to happen. Okay. I would have probably taken that and found ways to shorten it had I known what I know now. Mm -hmm. eh. Well. Okay. But so cool. we'll see. All right. Yep. I'll have to be hunting. Maybe I'll find. Maybe I'll find the pattern I want, and then worry about the yarn choice after I find the dress. Yeah, you could always do that. Because looking at patterns, you know, who doesn't like doing that? Mm-hmm. Well, don't you do that every night before bed? A little. <laughs> <laughs> I know you said you always get your iPad out, so I always figured that's what you're well, doing. Well, I read then. I do. Okay. I have a routine. Uh-huh. Okay. I delete any emails that I haven't deleted for the day. Okay. That should be deleted. Um, I check my news, web, my news feeds. Uh-huh. Why? I don't know. Um, because I've just watched the 10 o'clock news. Um, check Ravelry, all the uh -huh. groups that I follow, check to make uh -huh. sure there's nothing new out there. If I'm in the mood, I will peruse, I peruse my queue once in a while, I peruse my patterns, my UFOs, uh -huh. or things that I'm working on, just to make sure they're up to date. And then, um, I might look at patterns. I don't okay. always look at patterns. Okay. And then from there I open my ebook. Okay. That's my routine every night. Uh -huh. And I, I, I just stick with that every, you know. Uh -huh. So I am reading a book right now. It's called Mycroft Holmes. It is okay. about, it's, it's like Sherlock Holmes' older brother. Yeah. Okay. And it's really good. And right now they're in the Caribbean, which I really love because that's warming me from the inside out. And, um... I'm about half done with it. The b book, it's bizarre. It's written by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah, that's, you were telling me that. Well, okay, okay, come on, man. Jabbar yeah. writing a book? Yeah. He plays basketball. Right. So I'm loving the book. Now, granted, he had another author, the, but I think that this, the, 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 it was so, it's like there's two authors, it's a co, 
partnership yeah. kind of thing. Um, I don't know who did what or you know how what their working relationship was. Sure. You know, there's no notes on it. I haven't found yet any. any but uh -huh. um, I'm loving the book. Good. Absolutely Is loving it. Is Mycroft like work for British intelligence, like on the TV show? Yeah. Okay. Oh, there was a TV show of this. Well, no, just the Sherlock on the TV, the new new one. Mycroft is in it a lot, and he works for British Intelligence. So He works for the Secretary of War. Okay. In the British government, yes. Okay. Oh, I, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Oh, wow, I hear I thought I had a new character. Oh, Turns out, okay. what show? It's just called Sherlock. On what? You don't watch on, regular... On, um, I watch it on, on PBS, but it, I think it's on... Netflix too. I'm gonna have to look it up. Yeah, when I watched it, it was on PBS because that's I always watched PBS when I had cable. Right. That was my main channel. Well, that's what I'm thinking. So it's like it wasn't on broadcast TV. I knew you were a PBS watcher regularly. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'll have so, to look that up. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can stream it just for kicks. But yeah. the book is really good. Uh huh. So. Yeah, I guess a basketball player, you know, can write. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. But. It's funny because now when I when I finish it, I'm gonna I'm gonna share it with my son, because okay. Ryan, Mr. Basketball, oh gosh, oh yeah, he'll get a kick out of that. Yeah, he will, you know, and and mm -hmm. and I guess for me, growing up, my, okay, it's a crazy thing. My mom's cousin, um, was raised by my grandparents. Um, Pete was. Two years older, three years older, two, two years older than I was. And Pete, his parents both passed away um, when he was a kid. And so he came to live with grandma and grandpa when he was seventh grade-ish, something like that, maybe younger. Mm -hmm. Well, but every time then, because we lived so close to grandma and grandpa, um, that he was just around the corner. Um, when we would take a family vacation, like go camping in summer and that, Pete always came with us. Okay. And so we grew up being very close to Pete as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll never, he was just so into basketball. Mm -hmm. Now my dad and my brothers were not big basketball fans, mm -hmm. but I'm telling you, Pete was so into, and this was at the time when, you know, Lou Alcindor, becoming Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was playing for the Bucks, mm -hmm. and Oscar Robertson was, and my cousin Pete would tell us all about basketball. I mean, this guy knew everything uh. about the Bucks. Huge, huge Bucks fan. So I know who Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was from growing mm -hmm. up, yeah. listening to my cousin Pete. You know, he's really uh -huh. my second cousin, but I mean, all the time talking basketball. Uh -huh. He loved basketball. And oh. so that's how I knew what little bit I know about mm -hmm. basketball was Pete. And so with my son Ryan being such a basketball fanatic, mm -hmm. I just kind of chuckle because um, they're both, mm -hmm. you know, that Ryan can tell you anything and everything. He's like a statistics geek when it mm -hmm. comes to that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I laughed at him because he listens to the talk radio and all he the answers time. all those questions and uh -huh. wins prizes. Yeah. 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 He, yeah. It's, it's crazy. You know, uh -huh. and then for a while there, he says, yeah, I can't win anymore now. <laughs> yeah. Well, they have limits. You can only win so many. Right, right. Well, that makes sense. But yeah, oh my gosh. When it comes to sports trivia, he's insane. I mean, it's mm -hmm. how, it's crazy how good he is at that. So yeah, cool. yeah. I don't know where he gets it from. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, re he just remembers all this crap. Yeah. So. Good memory. Oh, well. At any oh, rate. Well, 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 that was a diversion, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully there will be some footage of steaking after this. I'm really anxious to start mine, but yeah. I have to wait. Yep. Stay oh, well. tuned. All righty. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. -bye. Okay, first step for steaking is to take a tapestry needle um, and thread it with a different color thread, something you'll really see. And then run it up a straight line from bottom to top or top to bottom, either way, and mark where your sticking line's gonna be. Now I went over one and under one 
and it's kind of, I mean, it sinks in pretty much. So maybe go over to under two. It might be easier to see. But I mean, like, make it bright orange or something so you can see it. And then we'll do the um, reinforcement on each side of that once you're done with running a thread like this. Okay, after you have this done, you're going to be able to work with your stitches to reinforce and you want to use the one just to the to the right of your line and this one here so if you're going to do a zigzag on a machine you would zigzag from here to here and the reason you use zigzag not straight is because then you can stretch it a little you don't have to worry that it's not going to have any flexibility i did a quick one here and i set my machine on two 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 width two length and i tried to go from this thread to this thread just like i showed you there um and i went all the way down i went on each side did the same thing and then i'll be able to pull this out and cut it now you have to decide if you want the sewn or the crocheted method there's two things if you're using superwash yarn you might want to do both to make sure it's reinforced because superwash yarn does not felt as easy. Well, it doesn't felt at all. So the possibilities there, I mean, just a little more secure if you do, if you sew and do that. And then you would sew over here instead and then do your crochet right at the center. So if you do both, you're going to sew over here. If you're going to do crochet, you do here. Or if you're going to do sewing only, you do it here. Okay. So, yep, this one is, is sewn. I'm going to leave it just with sewn. This is not super wash. So soon I will pull this out and then cut where that line is. Okay. And this one I am going to go back and crochet. And I will put the camera on while I'm doing that. Maybe I'll just turn the sound off so other people can talk in the room. But what I'm going to be picking up is these two stitches right here. These two threads, I should say, not stitches. Right here. And then do a chain uh, slip stitch crochet all the way up. Okay. I'm going to pause now. Um find an end here so for the crochet one I'm going to go right here and you pick this up like that maybe I got I maybe I'm gonna have to switch yarns Oh no, there it goes. I probably just have too small of a hook for this yarn. So you kind of just start there, this slip stitch. And see, this is where you're going to cut. You're going right next to it. Like and you're this. going under both bars of the V. Under both bars of the V. And you're going so that where this line is, is the back of your, your work, kind of. So you're holding it like this, and you're just going to go up. I'll get all the way up, and then I'll show you the other side. You're going to, in real life, you're going to pick the same weight yarn. This one looks a little thicker, so it might be a little bulkier, but I wanted a very contrasting one just for my sample and to show people. And I think you could probably even run this first and then do your your sewing machine if you have superwash yarn. I think this one in the long run is going to look neater. So this is probably the method I'm going to do. Um, because when you're done and you put your button band on, you can just turn this under and tack it down because it'll have this nice edge. Whereas the other one isn't going to be quite as nice of an edge. 
Now, since this is my first time, I'm hoping we're okay on that very first row. That was the only one I was worried about, like the cast on bind off edge, because I don't think I caught the, the cast off edge on the other end. I'm probably, here, I'm gonna catch it like this. I'm probably going to take my tail. On the bind on, I got right in there, that mm -hmm. I got. But on the other end, I don't think I got my cast on. So I'm gonna probably take my tail and go back and make sure I catch it. And if, if even if I did, I'll double catch it. Okay, so that's that side. Now this side. Oh, there is no match for that. Okay, there. So I pull it through and I pull it through and all the way until that loop comes and then just let that hang out there. And the same thing, you're gonna go both loops right up to where that thread is. So it's basically right up to where your other stitching is. All of a sudden, it's getting all splitty on me. Oh, gosh darn it. The other side wasn't so splitty. Do you want to pick a crochet hook that's the same amount of millimeters as the knitting you did? So if you had, you know, a five millimeter needle, size eight, then you'd want to pick a size H hook to crochet with. Most hook packages tell you, or right here, it'll tell you how many millimeters. So you can make sure you're matching up. And I think I have too small of one. As I've said many times, I grab what's handy. Cable needles, you'll never believe the things you can use for cable needles. <laughs> I never did the one, though, that Lori uh, said. Um, she grabs her hoop earrings and uses those for cable needles sometimes. Yep. Or stitch holders. That one I never did. But I've used toothpicks and, and uh, pins and needles and just whatever's handy. You know, here we're at that bind off edge again. I don't know if I have it. So I'm gonna probably, like I said, I'm gonna probably go back when we're all done. I'm gonna take my tail and I'll wrap it around and, and give it a knot just to be sure. Okay, so now I'm ready for cutting. When it's time to cut, I will, well, not quite ready. I gotta pull this out. And then you kinda just pull it and see right there can you see those stitches? That's where you're gonna cut, right along that edge there. So, yeah, if everybody wants to try to go crochet, or here, I can cut it right away, I suppose. I got a better scissors here. Okay. Some people do it with big ones. This is my first time. So I'll take a little scissors and do it very carefully.
Okay, there we go. That's what it looks like. It should naturally roll a little, and then when you tack it down, you'll just tack down your, your crocheted stitches to your knitting, and you'll pick up for your button band right, right along your edge here. And that should be that. And it'll felt itself eventually. Oh, see, this one came out a little bit. That's why those stitches are there to, to make sure everything's secure. This side too, everything looks good. Give it a stretch. Nothing's going back behind this, so I think this crochet method was a success on this one. All right. Okay? okay. All right. All right, I'm gonna cut this one open now. Pull that thread out. Okay, I cut it, there's the zigzag. When I fold this under, have it on the line where it needs to be picked up, I'll have to cover this with a ribbon. 